welcome to session 1.4 on key concepts, intersectionality. In the previous session, we established that disasters affect women, girls, boys, men, and persons with non-binary gender identities differently. The people who face the highest levels of inequality in society are usually those most at risk in disasters. For human rights-based approaches to enhance the resilience of all persons, we need to understand how different factors affect various persons and how these factors interact. This is what intersectionality is about, and it is key to ensure gender equal and inclusive DRR policies and programs. An individual's social vulnerability and resilience to disasters is heavily influenced by multiple factors such as gender and ethnicity, coupled with variables such as household composition and geographic location. Individuals within and across groups have various identities, vulnerabilities, needs, priorities, and capacities. For example, one woman in a specific community may have trouble evacuating from a flood due to her clothing, but her economic status allows her to evacuate quickly by car or by taxi. Another woman in the same community may have similar difficulties due to her clothing, but also have no access to early warning systems due to impaired hearing, putting her at much higher risk during a flood. Thinking of women as just one large group in DRR policies and programs disregards these differences and leads to one-size-fits-all strategies. These risk reinforcing inequalities and leaving the most marginalized behind. With intersectionality, we challenge this one-size-fits-all approach. Rather, we look at how gender, race, ethnicity, and many other social and cultural factors create different structures, norms, and practices that influence who has power, who is privileged, and who is discriminated against. It allows for a more in-depth understanding of the root causes of vulnerability. It acknowledges that in the context of disasters, not all women will have the same needs. Not all girls will have the same coping capacities. Not all boys will have the same priorities. Not all men will have the same vulnerabilities. And not all non-binary persons will have the same needs. Intersectionality leads to more inclusive DRR policies and programs that leave no one behind. There is no set methodology for adopting intersectional approaches in DRR. However, an easy and straightforward way to ensure intersectionality in all aspects of DRR is by asking the other question. This is an approach developed by critical race theorist Mari Matsuda that has been adapted for this course. It entails systematically asking the following questions. When I see something that looks unequal in terms of gender, I ask, where are the class interests in this? When I see something that looks socioeconomically uneven, I ask, where are aspects of ethnicity or race in this? When I see something that looks racist or ethnically intolerant, I ask, where are the gender aspects in this? Here are a few recommendations by the Overseas Development Institute. Analyze who is marginalized and vulnerable and how. Look beyond grouping persons according to gender. Research why some groups and individuals are at higher risk from disasters than others, and how social identities impact vulnerability. Brainstorm how DRR policies and programs can benefit everyone. Check that intersectional aspects are considered by asking, which women, which girls, which boys, which men, Collaborate with organizations and local actors that represent various vulnerable and marginalized groups to provide an enabling environment for intersectional approaches. Disaggregate data beyond sex, 
age, and disability, and include other contextually relevant dimensions of vulnerability, such as religion, sexual orientation, and health. A woman with visual impairment in Far West Nepal perfectly captured the importance of intersectional approaches in DRR by putting forth the specific challenges physical disabilities can entail during floods. During uncertain and chaotic times, such as a flood, people are rightly focused on saving themselves. People like us who cannot see, cannot hear, and therefore cannot move around with ease and confidence become even more vulnerable. We are left with no choice but to wait until somebody gets around to thinking of us until somebody is willing to help us. Remember that a human rights-based approach is about respecting and ensuring the rights of all persons regardless of their gender, background, age, or disability. Intersectionality allows us to make sure we include all women, girls, boys, men, and persons with non-binary gender identities. The result? Inclusive disaster risk reduction, which, as we know, is the only way for DRR to be appropriate, efficient, and sustainable.